everybody. Good. Welcome to First Bible Baptist Church on this exciting Wednesday evening. We're glad you have chosen. I am Pastor Kevin, one of many pastors here. Um, grateful to be a part of this staff and what God is trying to do in among this church and community. This is our annual business meeting. Uh, before we commence with our meeting, we will have uh, an offering we will receive. I'm going to give a short message. Uh, we'll have a time of prayer, and then we'll get into the, the uh, meeting itself. Uh, if you have not heard, Betty Chatterton uh, did pass away over the weekend. Her calling hours are tomorrow at Newcomer uh, from 10 to 12, and then there'll be a service from 12 to 1 o'clock, I believe, there uh, at Newcomer. So uh, if you have the opportunity... Uh, Betty, Betty Chatterton was one of these women, I don't know how old she was, anybody? 95? I was going to say 200, but if you say 95, she was just this, this, uh, just this beautiful old woman of grace and just wanted to serve God and wanted to be here. Um, she lived in, in Hilton a, and, and she would come to church on Sundays, even when she couldn't serve the Lord anymore. She still wanted to be around God's people. She served in Awana. She served at North Star Christian Academy. She served in every capacity. She loved kids and being around children. And, and uh, what a beautiful saint of the Lord she was in this life. And I'm sure she's enjoying life even more right now. So we rejoice. Please do pray for her family. I believe that some of them have been coming in from out of town. And uh, just going through all of that as well. There's rejoicing, but there, of course, is mourning as well. Um, Aaron Estebane, um, the pastor, the worship pastor that we hired from Austin, Texas, is still trying to, he will be coming here eventually, but he's trying to sell his home. Um, and there's, you know, those are just one of those things you can't make happen. Uh, he has had a lot of traffic in the home, just waiting for a good offer. So if you would pray for the Estebane family and uh, all of them. We have in your bulletin announced that we want to be a, a blessing to them as they arrive uh, in order for them to transition from Texas to New York. We want to be able to take them shopping. If you feel so inclined, you can uh, put on the, in the offering plate on an envelope Aaron Estebane's name or you can go online and you can give that way. My wife and I have done it online so that we can be an encouragement to them. Uh, we have a men's conference coming up. Um, we have sent out some save the date. It's been in the bulletin. Men, we want you to be a part of this. Uh, we want you to invite other men to this. This will be a tremendous event. Mark Trotter will be the preacher coming in. He is part of One Baptist Church, Billy Woods Church. Um, he's an associate pastor there. He was, oh boy, I want to say, for 20-something years, he was a pastor in New Philadelphia, Ohio, and uh, is now working with Mark or with uh, Billy Wood there in, um, in uh, what is it, Douglasville, I guess. So he is a tremendous speaker. You won't want to miss that. Mark that on your calendar and, and be ready for that. That's March 22nd and March 23rd. It's a Friday and Saturday, and then he will be with us that Sunday morning as well. February 17th, we have a membership class coming up. Um, this is an opportunity for you to kind of discover a little bit more about who we are as First Bible. Maybe you've been coming for a season. Uh, maybe you've kind of been checking us out a little bit, and you're thinking maybe it's time to make that next step, that commitment that says, I, I want to be more than just an observer from the side. I want, to, I want, to, I I want to, you to count on me. I'm going to be here. I want to be used of this church. Okay, that's what, uh, that's what membership is, saying, you know, I'm in, this is my family, this is my church. We have a class that describes, it goes through what we are and who we are and what we believe and what we expect out of the members of our church, the people that would say First Bible Baptist Church is my home church. That is coming up on February the 17th. Uh, it'll be during the second service. I was told by Dylan Briscoe this morning we already have about a dozen people signed up. Uh, which is great. Uh, some of the people, they do just what I said. They come in, they sit, and they listen and explore a little bit. They discover a little bit more about who we are as a church. And um, 
they may not sign on the dotted line for a couple months. And other people, they've been here, they know what's going on, they feel very comfortable, and they come right in, uh, have an opportunity to, uh, to ask questions and uh, feel very comfortable signing up as well. We have a spiritual gifting class, uh, I believe that's in the bulletin as well, coming up in March. Another great opportunity for you to explore who you are. Uh, one of the things that we're doing in this church is trying to develop each and every person to be a minister, okay? That each and every one of us would use our strengths, that we wouldn't just have people with a pulse and plug them in, but we would have people in the right position, uh, the position that God has called every one of us. And if you're a part of this church, then you are here because God has brought you here, and we need you to use your strengths to build this local church, okay? So those are some things that are coming up. We're going to receive an offering, Paul, if we can do that right now. It's for Beams. Beams is a Bible distribution uh, group. Uh, the, the word Beams st st stands for Bible Education and Missionary Service. What they do is they send free King James hardcover Bibles to missionaries around the world, okay? Uh, free charge, did I say that? Now, of course, people have to pay for them. I think, I don't know, Dan, if you know this, $7 a Bible, something like that. It's around $7 a Bible right now. So for every $7 you put in the plate today, it's going to allow a missionary on the foreign field to get a Bible that he can thereby hand out free of charge. Uh, Dr. Rene Ferret, he came to Zambia a couple times. I have a real good relationship with him. I've been here. This is um, Savannah, my wife, her mother worked at this ministry for years, and uh, they really do a tremendous job of distributing Bibles to missionaries. They partner with Baptist missionaries around the world, and they ship those Bibles there. It's a, it's a tremendous opportunity, um, and it's money well spent. How many of y'all have a Bible? How many of y'all have more than one Bible, right? Okay, there's people... Uh, I know I was talking to Dan the other day. There's people in Chipata that can't find, it's, it's either ridiculously expensive or they just can't find a Bible in their language. Uh, there's, there's places like that exist still in our world today. We take it for granted. You can get one on your phone. You can, you can have a couple hardcovers, uh, copies in your car, next to your bed, in your dining room, wherever it may be. There's people that don't have that. Beams help solve that problem, getting the Bible into people's hands. Let's pray, and we will receive an offering for them. Father, we are grateful for your revelation that has been preserved, that we may read it and be impacted by your voice, by your breath. Father, thank you for Dr. Rene Ferret, and thank you for Beam's uh, ministry that has given out uh, tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of Bibles that have gone around the world. And I'm certain many people have been impacted by the reading of your word. God, we do pray even now that you would bless this ministry, their vision, their focus. Help them to be impactful. Help them to be efficient with the resources they get. Help them to be creative in their ways of getting Bibles uh, around the world. And God, would you bless this congregation. Thank you for their generosity, their continual desire to give um, and uh, to see your kingdom expand. We pray for your will to be accomplished now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, as I said, we will be having our business meeting here in just a few minutes. There were a couple pamphlets, these green ones that were available as you walked in. If you did not get one of those, um, there are still some available. Is that true, Tim? Are there some back there? Okay, we're going to actually, what we're going to do is shake hands for a second. If you need one, go grab one real quick. Now, here's the thing. I always like to be friendly, and I like to say on Wednesdays, hey, we're going to stand up and greet each other. And then somebody told me that I was doing it wrong because I said, you have to, you people have to go greet these people, and you people have to greet these people. And then they said, well, if these people go over there and those people go over there, then there's nobody that they've really met because everybody has just changed in sides. So I said, what do I do? And they said, well, you should tell these people to not move, and these people need to go move. You guys want to stay? Okay, because this side usually is the spiritual side anyways, right? So, yeah. So tonight, we're going to do a little bit different. You guys do not move. 
unless you have to go get a paper or use the bathroom or anything like that. You guys, you have to meet these people over here, okay? You have to greet them with a friendly, okay? The Bible says if you want friends, show yourself friendly. Okay, ready, set, go. No one on this side, that means, right? That nobody else should be left on this side. All right, let's grab a seat. All right, if you don't have a Bible with you, there are some free Bibles available, available at the, over by the stairs as you walk in. They're free of charge. You can take them with you. We'd love for you to have one. Wednesday nights, we do a little bit more of a Bible study. I'm just going to give a short charge. Uh, then Nicole Oakton will join me, my financial director, and we'll walk through the meeting. We'll vote for our deacons, and we will conclude our service. All right, let's pray together and we'll open up the scripture. Father, again, thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for the country we live in. We thank you for the state and the county that we live in. Lord, we pray for our leadership, our president. Lord, we pray for our governor. Lord, we pray for 
our town representatives and ask that you would lead them and give them wisdom. Lord, correct them where they're wrong and give them grace and strength where they need it. Lord, would you prosper us and help us to be successful as a church that we would build your kingdom. Help us, God, that we would honor you and, and please you no matter what the circumstances or the toils or the tribulations of this life may be. God, we want to be a people that worship and praise you and honor you in all things. Father, thank you. Um, Lord, thank you for the resources that you have given to this church. Thank you for the history that you have given to this church and the many people that you have used to impact this community. Father, we ask that you would speak to us this evening. We trust that you are going to do a work in each one of our lives. Would you conform us a little bit more, strengthen us, God, and allow us to go forth as the salt and the light of the earth. Open up our eyes that we may behold and be able to see your word, hear your voice, even this night, we pray in Christ's name, amen. Matthew chapter 16 uh, is where we're going to kind of start off. We're going to, I'm going to put a couple verses up on the screen for you tonight, and we're going to flip around a little bit, but I love being with my Bible open, so even if I have it up on the screen, um, there you go, even if I have it up on the screen, we still want to open our Bibles. It's good to become Bible literate, find your way around the scripture as well. First Bible Baptist Church is 52 years old. This is a church that started in the 1960s. Pastor Mullen, Pastor Modlish, Pastor Grace, of course, and now uh, myself. Many thousands of people have come through our buildings. We've had bus ministries. We've had summer camps. We've had or we have Awana and Bible Institutes and Bible and mission conferences. I remember as a young Christian going to a week-long Bible conference. They would have uh, preachers that spoke at nine, like 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, then we'd break for lunch and come back in the afternoon, and then we'd come back at 7 o'clock at night, hear four or five messages each day, Monday through the whole week, and uh, these big Bible conferences and missions conferences in which we had missionaries from all over the world and powerful speakers that would come in and open up the Word and allow your heart to burn for the things of God. We've done Christmas performances where we just did one this year, well last year, which probably 4,000 people came through our church. There have been many building projects, many activities, many programs, many events this church in 52 years has sent out many missionaries. We have supported with the tune of millions of dollars um, other missionaries that were not sent from this church and local missionaries as well. We have visited the foreign field uh, internationally. We have been around this world uh, uh, attempting to plant seeds that would grow uh, as the gospel would prosper in those lands. But through all of this, there really has been one focus, and this is what I want you to see in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, and that focus is to build the church. He says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen, the church is not a building, but it is a people, okay? It's not the work of the people to build the church, but it is the work of God to build his people, to build his church. The people, a called out assembly, if you will, uh, united by the blood of Jesus Christ and under his authority together for the sake of his kingdom. So when we talk about a church, oftentimes we think in our mind about a building. But a church is not a building. This is a location. This isn't a church. The people are the church. So when Jesus said, uh, upon this rock I will build my church, at no moment in his mind did he imagine four walls. What he imagined were a group of people called together and united through the blood of Jesus Christ 
to carry out His mission into the world. Are you following me this evening? Our vision statement in First Bible is to, is to love God, love people, serve others, and tell everyone. And maybe you've not been around for very long, but we all need a refresher course on this. The first, the first uh, uh, attribute of this, and, and this, is, this is not something clever we thought of ourselves. This is, in essence, a little bit of a modernation, modernization of the, of the Scripture. This is what Jesus told us, love God. Okay, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor. Okay, so our, our first thought here is that we are to love God. This is our, our greatest pursuit. In 2018, we really tried to spend a lot of time focusing on our relationship, on this vertical relationship with God. And obviously, you never stop doing this, but our, uh, I, uh, we, we want to have a relentless passion for our time with God, knowing that as we spend time with God, critical, intimate time with God, that we grow nearer to Him. And as we grow nearer to Him, we become more like Him. So we thereby love Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Secondly, we are to love people. So first, we are uh, uh, loving God is our greatest pursuit, but loving people is our greatest investment. In 2019, we are attempting this year to find ways to practically love our neighbor. Okay, now we're not going to stop loving God so that we can now love our neighbor, love people, right? But now that we are growing in our love for God, we want to do something with that love. We cannot just hoard that love that God has put within us. We now take that divine, that, that love that the Godhead can give to us and fill all those void, and we allow that love to ooze out into the world around us. And we love people by doing that. Thirdly, we, we want to serve others. It's our, our greatest call. It's a humble commitment to reveal God's love in practical ways. So uh, next year, Pastor Vinny and, and, and the staff, we are looking at ways to help us to kind of stretch a little bit and get outside of those comfort zones and serve people that we wouldn't normally serve. The last one is that we would tell everyone. This is our vision. Love God, love people, serve others, and tell everyone. And, and I realize that telling people the gospel message can sometimes be uncomfortable, but this could be our greatest privilege is to share the love of God to the world around us. As I watch the news, as I read different articles that are written, as I look what happens in our uh, laws, in our counties, even in our churches, I feel like the world is upside down. I feel like evil is running rampant. And there's a part of me that says, man, this whole thing is just over. We just cash in our chips. What's the point, right? And then I'm reminded, <laughs> right, that the point is to tell everyone. And sometimes we do this. We go, but there's so many out there that disagree with me, that disagree with the Scripture, that disagree with God. So what's the point? The point is every one of us can tell someone else. And that person, we can make an impact in somebody's life. That is beautiful. Impacting one person at a time. We don't need to have mass crusades. We don't need to, we don't need to you know, put uh, airplanes crossing the skies of Rochester with you know, big signs of God loves you. What we need to do is simply where we work, in the neighborhoods that we that, that, that we live, we need to open up our mouths and we need to speak, not just live it, living it is important, but we need to speak the gospel to people in such a way that they can hear. Although 
not our primary function to build, it's God's. We have a role. We are laborers together with God. We are in it with God, that we would make his name great among the nations, to praise him, to worship Jesus Christ, to live in accordance with the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the directives of the Scripture. We are to be a people that resemble Jesus. So when, so when people say, well, show me Jesus, show me who he is, what does he look like? Here we are. Well, no, your name's Kevin, not Jesus. I know, but, but I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I'm a little Jesus. I'm supposed to resemble, now I get it, I'm imperfect, but I am supposed to, people are supposed to look at us, the called out, the holy, the peculiar. They're supposed to look at us and see him, okay? That is what we are to do. It is God that is building the church. We are laborers together with him. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 with me. First Corinthians chapter three. I'm going to put up a, just this one verse, but I have a. Uh, if we look in verse six, First Corinthians chapter three and verse six says, "I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase." See, this is God's work. When I, when I come into the office, sometimes I feel overwhelmed that I'm, the, I, I, I'm one of the pastors here at First Bible Baptist Church, and I somehow have a spiritual responsibility, and I'm trying to reach, I drive past. Do you ever drive through neighborhoods and look and see? There's people living in those homes. You drive through an apartment complex, and I think to myself, there's hundreds of people here that don't know Christ, that don't go to a church, that, that, that don't have anybody to be the light and the salt in their life, and it weighs on me. And I think to myself, what are we going to do? How do we do this whole thing? And then I look at a verse like this, and I see that it's God that does the work. It's God that gives the increase. It says in verse 8, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We labor to make God's name great among the nations. That all people from every nation, from every tribe, from every tongue, from every people would call out and give God the glory that is due only to him. We praise God with our mouth. We can praise God with our hands, with our time, with our resources. We're not talking about a, a church service in different areas of the world. To plan a church is, is wonderful, okay? And a lot of times when we, a missionary says, I planted a church, again, what do we think? We think about somebody who built four walls, in the Ukraine, who built four walls in Zambia, and he put an address on it and says, I've planted a church. No, he built four walls. What the missionary is trying to do and what we're trying to do is build the church, the people of God, that there would be a group of called out, divinely washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, people that are so impassioned by the grace of God and his love that they would give their life to love him, love others, serve, and tell everyone. That's what we are called. It is now the church armed with humility, armed with wisdom, armed with discernment, armed with grace, and armed with truth armed with forgiveness and with love, armed with hope, armed with the presence of God himself, armed with a revelation that comes from God and inspired by the life and person of Jesus Christ himself. 
We, we, we don't just have a, 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 a nebulous record. We have a God that became flesh that we can look at and follow and say, this is how he did it, therefore, this is how I should do it. See, our work is not done. We have a, a quality church building, if you look around. We have quality programs. We have discipleship. We have Awana. We have missions. We have counseling. We have Sunday school. We have teen ministry. We have marriage ministries. We have life groups. We have a lot of good that is being done at this place. But 990 Manitow Road is not the church. It's just the walls of a, of a building at the end of the day. This is just material. The church are the people. And we are to be a people that live for God. God is not building a structure on earth. God does not need real estate. God does not need walls or hallways or pews or lights or heaters or air conditioners. God is not calling people to a temple. In fact, God has made his people a temple. That's who we are. Look in Acts chapter 20. I didn't put this up on the screen. I want you to turn Matthew, Mark, Luke, Acts. And I'll finish up with this text. Max, uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 18. And he says, and when they were come to him, he said unto them, you know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, verse 19, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and taught you publicly and from house to house, and I want you to see this verse in 21, testifying, I, under, I underlined it in my Bible, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. See what he's saying here in this text? is I have lived my life, I have testified to you the need for you to understand what is repentance and what is faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now verse 22, and now behold I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Paul says, I, I, I'm not really all that worried. I know that God is in control. My responsibility is to testify to the Jews and to the Greeks, irrelevant of the circumstances that behold me. Verse 23, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. I like joy. How many of y'all like joy? I like joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what ministry he's talking about? To testify the gospel. That word gospel, what's it mean? I've got some good news for you. It's my job to testify to the world around me. There's 7 billion people, Pastor Kevin. I can't reach 7 billion people. God's not asking you to reach 7 billion people. He's asking you to testify to the world around you here. Who is your world? Testify means to give a, a testimony or knowledge of something not known to others. The purpose of First Bible Baptist Church is to be a people that love God, love people, serve others, and tell everyone. We are imperfect we are not holy in all of our ways. But we don't need to stay there. We need to be a people that strive. We need to be a people that recognize that God himself, Jesus Christ himself, is worthy of us giving our life to him. 
we want to faithfully labor as I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return very soon with the, with the shout of the archangel. And the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise and then, and, and then those that remain will be caught up in the air and forever shall be with the Lord. I believe that sound is going to happen soon. Say, Pastor Kevin, when? Soon. Maybe very even soon, right? Today, I like that, right? Until then, what are we supposed to do? We are to testify. We are to be a testimony to this world that the world may know the repentance and the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ and receive the grace of God that we, yes, would receive salvation, which means I am forgiven of my sins, but even more importantly than my personal salvation is that I, now saved, am able to worship the one who created all things and everything. That's why we exist. 52 years ago, the church was started by a pastor that said, I believe we need to build a church. Didn't need an address. He needed to impact people. And that's what our business is. That's what a business meeting is, you know. We may look at numbers in a little bit. We may talk about resources in a little bit. But the business of the church is reaching the world that the world may worship our God. Let's pray together.